So I'm Amelia Harrington and I've got Caitlin and Steph. So I'm Caitlin, I'm Pure Innovations Disability Awareness Ambassador. And Steph. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Steph. I'm the founder of the Butterfly Things Sang Initiative. If you want to look and find out more about my work or work with me, you can do just tap along to my Facebook page, the Butterfly Things Sang Initiative. Awesome. I forgot to say as well, I'm the Community and Client Engagement Officer for Pure. So today we're going to be focusing on health professional videos and so basically the plan is for these topics of conversation is every month there's going to be a new topic it could be seen as taboo subjects but I want a professional and also client and other people's kind of thoughts opinions and experiences with with these subjects so there can be anything like cervical screening, breast screening, prostate screening, safe sex, anything like that. Um, and it's just basically to get the clients from Pure Innovations and other guys with disabilities and or autism to gain more knowledge on these subjects. Um, so they've got the help and, and, and stuff like that really. But I do advise that we are not professionals um, so if anything happens or occurs that you're not you're, you're unsure about, definitely just seek GP advice because we are not medical to like the sex part of it. Yeah. Um, so like I've mentioned before previously a while back, um, that we we want to start talking about these type of subjects, the clients are pure, because they're not talked about enough, especially you know, oh. sex in general. It's, it's kind yeah. of like shunned, isn't it? For yeah. people with, with disabilities, it's shunned. And it's like, why, you know? Yeah. Why, why yeah. can't they do? We all have hormones and we all have feelings like everyone else. Everyone has those feelings. So what makes it any different? Nothing. So yeah, your experiences on the subject of sex. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about other little bits and pieces here, but for now, what's like your experience on it? Well, um, yeah, um, so I've had experience of, like, sex and, like, you know, like, solo uh, playing stuff, uh, like, because I've never had a partner, so I've never experienced sex with a partner, but, you know, I've experienced solo pleasure through um, toys and stuff. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I enjoy that, obviously, um, it would, uh, um, I'm waiting for that right moment where I do meet the right uh, guy so I can experience sex with a partner, but that hasn't happened yet. But um, until then, I'm happy to experience my body and, you know, my uh, hormones and feelings through other ways, through, uh, you know, so well things and sort of all them sort of things and as you as as a woman comfortable with with doing it solo like because I know I know a lot of like people a lot of women aren't comfortable with talking about it yeah so, uh, are you comfortable it, like, I mean yeah, yeah I'm comfortable with giving doing like solo play uh, like um obviously um you know you know on average it takes a woman, you know, um, a lot longer to reach, you know, an orgasm than a man does. And I think there's a lot of, like, um, prejudice around women and orgasms, which is, you know, some pe women have never experienced an orgasm. And I think there's this, like, this whole pressure of that um, we as women put on ourselves from society and what we see on TV and what we see in the media from like, oh, um, you know, we've got to experience these things when uh, when, when maybe you're not ready or you, you may not have um, met the right person who you feel comfortable to experience these things with uh, and you just want to experience it on your own, get to know 
your own body first before you know you you share it with a partner that's probably the the best advice I've ever heard to be honest yeah. Steph so <laughs> so thank you for that no that's that really really that's really yeah that's good um so other questions around se- so do you know where to get like contraceptives from or you know anything like that where where would you get it from or where would you you know where would you get it from obviously obviously if somebody wanted um to speak, um, you know, ask about uh, contraception, they could go to the GP, because, uh, you know, with GPs, they have a lot of family planning clinics, so they can talk to you about contraception. And, uh, you know, uh, there's loads of different, uh, I think there's about, uh, not a lot of people know this, but I think there's about, um, if I can remember, there's about 13 different types of uh, contraception. I think there's something, there's more contraception for men, for women than there is men. But um, not every contraception is right for everyone. So what works for me might not work, work for that person or this person so it's about discussing the options with a a medical professional and getting that right advice and you know you can try uh, one type of contraception and if that doesn't isn't right for you it isn't agreeable to you then you can try another one and it's just find it going through different things until you find what's right for you and your body and your rhythm and obviously contraception isn't just used for like birth control and sex um but, but it can be used for like period problems so if anyone's got heavy periods or polycystic ovaries then you can go on the pill for period problems and there's all sorts out there it's just we don't as a society we don't talk about sex and relationships and contraception because it was only like in the 1960s that contraception became a thing and like we have this whole notion that like oh no sex please we're British so as a British society we don't like to talk about sex, although we we're, we do it and we do think about it, but we're just not openly discussing it. And it's the same with disabilities, and that is part of my Butterfly Princess Send Initiative motto is to talk about a range of these taboo subjects that link in very neatly with disability, really. Definitely, definitely. Caitlin, have you got any questions <laughs> or anything about? about sex or well you seem obviously quite knowledgeable about um sex and like the risks and being careful and precautious of it would you how long like what age would you say you learned about that do you think because of your disability you were kind of shielded from it a little bit more than the average person yeah well I would definitely say I was shielded I mean Obviously in schools, I know, I know it may be a bit different now, but obviously when I was at school, because I'm 29, so I was at school quite a few years ago, so we did get the basic understanding of, you know, sex and um, sex education and, you know, when we, we knew and we were told what periods are, what sanitary towels are, tampons and stuff. But, um, you know, nobody, like, uh, was, like, had an open and honest discussion with me and said, so well, if you have a relationship with somebody, then, um, you know, how will you feel? And, you know, it's all about peer pressure. And, like we said in the, the, before, the, the one about relationships, it's about having them open and honest conversations and knowing what you, you and your partner are, are feel comfortable with and um not and and it's also about that not you not 
uh, pushing yourself to do something that you're not comfortable with just because you feel pressurised into doing something. Um, so I, I can't word this one very well, but I remember seeing like a news article about it. So I'm just going to try and, and figure it out. So do you think sex for people with disabilities is portrayed on the media media well because obviously when you watch a film or you watch a series it's always the usual sex scene I've never seen like a sex scene with people with disabilities do you think it should be portrayed on tv and movies just so people who are watching it with disabilities can you know can kind of relate to it in a sense and be like oh I can do it as well type of thing does that make yeah. sense? Have I worded that okay? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, yeah, um, there isn't enough, like, of disability and, you know, relationships and d disabilities as a whole portrayed very much in the media, although it has improved over the years. But, you know, um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, people that, you know, like people that I've talked to from doing my vlogs, there's a thing of like, you know, how some disabled people use um, sex workers to experience sex, or like there's something called sex surrogacy. Uh, so that could, that, that should be something that's explored and, and just to just to acknowledge that disabled people are sexual beings as well and they do it if they can have a relationship and enjoy uh, you know the bodies in a comfortable way or whether it be a solo or with a partner then they should be encouraged to do that and um, I also think that uh, it's not just for media but Obviously, uh, some disabled people we have like the uh, assistants or carers. Um, I don't like to use the word carers as much because, in my view, it's very derogatory. But for the purpose of this video, I will use the word carer because it's that small, widely known. Uh, uh, carers are some carers are very comfortable with talking to their clients about um to the people they support about sex and you know sexual health and relationships so i do think there's um you know there's a lot of training that needs to be had especially with uh organizations that work with disabled people and you know health professionals carers um OTs and stuff so that like what if any if anyone with a disability has a question about sex, sexual health or relationship or contraception or whatever, then that that uh, per individual should be uh, equipped with the right tools in order to speak uh, comfortably and have an engaging conversation with the the person they're supporting about what they want to discuss with them. Awesome. I've got like 20 questions from what you've just said then. So <laughs> so when you say like um, people with disabilities go to like sex workers and stuff, for, what what do you mean by that? Can you like elaborate what what that means just for, for the people watching? Uh, well, a sex work, well, obviously uh, we say all oh, sex workers now, but obviously like, we, we don't like to say the word prostitute because it could um, be um, deemed a derogatory term, but sex workers, yes, it's when somebody pays another person for sexual services which is agreed upon with them and them and the person so there is a, a number there is uh, some uh, services that disabled people can go to if they want to and, and arrange to have um to have um sexual services that they pay for i, I didn't know that i didn't know it was like yeah for you know 
specifically for people with disabilities you know like groups for you know specifically for yeah. disabilities yeah. I didn't know that I mean I knew obviously anybody can go and unpay for, for sex so I just yeah. assumed yeah. anybody with a disability could go on too but if there's actually groups out there as well it's kind of good knowledge um what was the other one as well the sex sex surrogacy so sex surrogacy, uh, basically, yeah. basically obviously we've all heard the term of surrogacy where you know a, a lady or whoever carries a, a a child for nine months and then that per the part whoever that the woman is carrying the child for they will pay for that service so when it comes to sex surrogacy, I only learned this a few months ago, which is um, they have, um, it's not like a prostitute where they like just, you know, have sex for like, you know, a, a num for like whenever you want, you will have a plan with that sex surrogacy, surrogate, and you will have to have, a therapist as well to um you know to you know start uh, work together with the sex so we get to support you and basically that is uh just for the sex so we get to um teach you how to feel comfortable with your body so it might be someone you know it might be um uh, they may be supporting a man or a woman who um, hasn't seen theirself naked before. So it may be something that, that um, the sex surrogate helps, helps in support them in order to see their naked body for the first time and to feel comfortable with their body. Or it may be, you know, like hugging or kissing and, and just to, uh, so it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, a full sexual intercourse. It just means um, they're supporting you in order to feel comfortable with your body and not and to feel ashamed of it, really. Yeah, definitely. And is that kind of like, not a, a popular thing, but is that well known to people with disabilities or is it still quite underground? Um. Um, like obviously, um, I only heard of it a few months ago, so um, I never knew about it until it was mentioned to me uh, for the purpose for my one of my blog interviews, and I would really like to um interview a a sex surrogate, you know, just to uh, you know, just to gain a bit more understanding for my uh, audiences of what their work is, what it involves, and, you know, why it's not very well known within society. Yeah, well, that'd be a really good interview, that, wouldn't it? Yeah. That'd be really informative, really informative. I'd love to watch that. If you, if you find anything like that, you know, if you find someone to interview, um, yeah. let me know when it, like, you put it on online and I'll have a look. Yeah. Um, another... Question. Can have you got any questions or? Um, I'm really struggling for questions. I feel like all your answers are so comprehensive. You kind of knock a few questions. Yeah, you do. You do. Anyway, um, you mentioned about like like sex toys stuff. So, do you think there's like adequate sex toys for people with disabilities? Uh, yes and no. I mean, obviously, because of like, you know, uh, the reason why I'm so knowledgeable is because, you know, of the, the amount of people that I chat to from my blog. So um, obviously there is sort of a range of uh, different sex ties on the market, but I think, you know, um, you know, um, getting sex ties for people with a range of disabilities is sort of a new and up coming thing. I mean, um, there is a company in Amsterdam, they're called Cairo, K-double-I-R-double-O, and they're based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And cause I did an interview with, like, with, a, 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 with a lady who's a, a sex tech, a sex 
tech researcher for that company and what they're doing is like obviously researching the needs and different abilities for people with disabilities in order for them to come up with a range of different sex ties in order to meet, meet their individual needs. needs. So that is an up-and-coming thing. Have you ever been into a sex shop? Oh, yeah, um, obviously, yeah, um, obviously, um, I've been into, like, been, I've, I've, I go into, I've been into Ang Summers and purchased, you know, different vibrators, you know, um, I, I did, um, I, um, well, I didn't really do a vlog for, um, for Love Hoggy, but they knew about the work that I would do it, was doing about all my disability awareness things oh, through nice. my vlogs. And obviously, um, as a thank you, they sort of sent me some, um, you know, goodies through the post. So I got to try them. So again, it's just experimenting again with different things that make me feel, that make you feel comfortable. But I would like, uh, to work with, you know, like uh, a sex tie company like Ann Summers, Will Fungi, and just to, uh, whoever else, and just to like really work with them and sort of like, you know, uh, help them develop products, but also uh, help, um, help them educate that, you know, sex should be something that is talked about in relation to disability and it's not something that they should be ashamed of and people regardless of their disability should be supported in order to explore their bodies in whatever way they possibly can. Definitely so I mean you've probably answered the question but when you've been to that like, in these places have you just had like positive experiences were they helpful did they you know yeah, were they helpful and stuff? And yeah, yeah, they were, they were really helpful. Obviously, I I explained what I was looking for, and they were, they were really helpful. You know, it's really discreet. You know, obviously, if you're arguing from love hungry, uh, because obviously that's an online thing. So obviously, we don't have any shops on the high street so you do have to argue online so it's obviously a discreet argue you know if on your bank statements or whatever uh they, they have like they, it doesn't just come up with honey on your bank statement so if you don't want anyone to know you don't want your parents or your carers to know then there is that it's a bit of discreetness and that's the thing that that i like really because you, you know, uh, you go always want to want your parents to know about your sex life, do you? So that is a really good positive step, I feel. But um, it's, it's still a long way to go in, in terms of education and educating people around sex relationships and disabilities. And that is what I'm hoping I can achieve through this partnership with Pure and other things. Hopefully we can maybe like expand on this, you know, um, sometime in the future with more videos because everything I talk about, everything that I talk about is a passion and I speak about it with pure passion and determination. We can tell as well, we can tell. <laughs> um, right, I don't know whether to add this question in, but I, I want to ask it anyway, just because it's kind of on my mind. Um, so I know you said like every person with like a disability should like explore the bodies and like, you know, um, it should be hid away that they can have sex and stuff. But what happens if somebody with a disability hasn't got the capacity, but they still have those urges and those needs? Like what, like even Caitlin, what, what are your thoughts? Like this is just, like a random question like it's just in my head I just wanted to kind of like know your both of your thoughts on it in a sense obviously obviously um 
you know, it can be really hard if, you know, if they, they haven't got that capacity, but they've still got um, the, them feelings. I mean, obviously, they need, if they can communicate the feelings, they need to speak with someone or communicate with someone they can trust. Or, you know, you know, uh, speak to a therapist or whatever. Uh, uh, and, and obviously, obviously, being in a relationship isn't all about the physical side, the sexual side. It's about um, other things as well. So getting to know each other in other ways, doing fun stuff together, you know, like maybe going to the cinema or going for a nice meal or you know, going on a nice holiday, not everything about sex you know, is about sex. You can you can still have a full and enjoyable life without sex if you're not able to have sex. No, I agree. No, that's that's good. That's that's like answered the question. What about you, Kate? What, what do you yeah. think? Because that's, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Because you've still got the urges, you've still got the feelings, you still you know but you can't get it across as someone it's so hard I think um the the question I guess is more on the education that we allow because like we kind of you know don't have this idea of people with disabilities um being sexy or wanting to have sex or wanting to engage in those intimate moments that we we never really take the time to learn how to communicate that or we kind of just disregard a person with a disability in sexual ways completely and I think I think the key is like it's not a how do we comprehend that it's more of like how do we learn how to be able to have that conversation with someone I think once you asked people with disabilities and you kind of took the time to get to know those those myths and those stereotypes are wrong I think that's probably the best way to kind of come up with an answer yeah, it's think- all about education isn't it it's just about like educating them just talking to them like just supporting them in that way it's that's it isn't it I mean everything in in life is just about education isn't it yeah I mean obviously being in the position where I'm in like Sarah like, educate people I would like to be the face of like uh, you know, disability and sexiness campaign uh, where they do like maybe a photo shoot where you like, you know, get dressed up and just to show, show bodies in a, all different shapes and sizes, but in a sexiness way, like uh, you can still be sexy and have a disability, there's no difference. I love that idea, like a, a boudoir kind of shoot. Yeah. Yeah, That'd be, uh, yeah, that's awesome. No, that's a really good idea because I remember a couple of months ago, Dove did like a body positivity campaign, yeah. but there wasn't anyone with a disability to my knowledge. It was like just body shapes, which again is progressive enough because we do have a body positivity movement. Yeah. But I think the problem is people forget that the body positivity movement it, it yeah. originally wasn't about, you know, it's okay to yeah. be sized it was about marginalized people with dis- yeah. people with disabled bodies people who were extremely overweight or people who were having eating disorders who were completely you know skipped over because they didn't fit that stereotype of being extremely underweight or overweight so I think that's a really good idea it's just because the Dove campaign to my knowledge it was just bodies it wasn't yeah there wasn't any dis- people with disabilities in there so it would be good to see that kind of inclusivity in the future yeah, that'd be awesome. Are you like happy to do something like that? Is that like one of your goals to do? Yeah, I mean, I've, uh, yeah, but it's like finding the the right person to do it with and like just, but you never know where it could lead. Definitely. Definitely. Have you like, I mean, I probably won't put these these questions. I'm just like, this is general information now because I'm really intrigued. So like, have you actually spoke to people? Have you like spoke to like agencies who do these shoots? Um, or is it just like an idea? Or it's not in stone yet. Or? It's an idea that I would like to explore more of. Nice. nice. I think that's awesome. That's an awesome idea. And that's all good news for you then. Yeah. I'm glad all this is like you, you're 
progressing with it and it's all positive. Uh, brilliant. Love it.